A recent viewer, obviously not an avid EV fan, recently commented that EVs were catching fire all over the world, especially in China and on ships, and he dreaded what would happen when one caught fire in the Euro Tunnel. He concluded that EVs should be banned, we all go back to good old petrol cars. Once again, the instant cause was EVs before the fire was even out, and the investigators had even begun their unpleasant task, namely finding out the actual cause. The media also made it headline news around the world. So let's see what's really going on. Anything electrical can catch fire. Electric blankets, electric fires, vaping devices, mobile phones, to name just a few. And an electric blanket for catching fire is quite capable of burning down a house with all the occupants inside. So how bad are EVs? Well, fires in EVs in China are definitely on the rise. That is true, and BYD has by far the most fires of all the Chinese manufacturers according to the latest reports. In 20, 2021 alone, China manufactured over 3 million cars. And a recent official report stated that BYD reported 11 EV fires between 2020 and 2022. Li Cars had five EV fires, Xpeng had four fires, and Neo just one single EV fire. Tesla had none. Yet, the insurance industry claims that 660 EVs caught fire this first quarter of 2023 alone. Well, needless to say, the figures do not quite tally. Also be aware that the figures generally cover all EVs not just cars. There are millions of electric scooters, bikes and hoverboards which are all classed as vehicles and many are really cheaply made and amazingly liable to catch fire. More importantly, China does sell millions of the tiny little, tiny little Wuling Minis costing $4,000 for a car which would never be allowed on the roads in the UK, Europe or the US. So to say that EVs are catching fire all over China is probably not exactly true. And yes, there have been fires on ships carrying EVs. And none where I can find only EVs were on board and which have been officially investigated and found to be the primary cause. Well, the tragic fire above the Grande Costa d'Avorio off New Jersey recently where two firefighters lost their lives hit all the headlines and initially two that was blamed on EVs until it was established that, in fact, there were no EVs at all on board. All of the cars were older petrol and diesel models, obviously well past their best, heading to Africa where someone would be selling these death traps to locals for a very healthy profit. Fires always happen, always have, always will. But we are in a bit of a hysterical rant about EVs causing ships to burn and sink great clickbait doesn't matter if it's true or not well in fact to answer the initial comment about the euro tunnel fire possibility there is only one instant recently of a fire on board the shuttle that was in 1996 well, not that recent and was caused by a good old diesel lorry the crew reported sparks coming out of the lorry shortly before it caught fire not an ev in sight not back in 1996 certainly not on fire. Or well, what about the Hoag's Yamen? It caught fire carrying 2,420 used cars and after detailed investigation it was definitely caused by a faulty loose battery. But on an old Banger ice car. Well these old cars, once again, they're known for a fire hazard and the standard operating procedure is to undo and remove the battery terminals to prevent sparks and fires. Well, in this case, apparently the terminal was loosened but not removed and sparks caught all the old oil that had been spilled from the engine on fire. Oh, the list is really endless and researching this subject I was amazed at how many ships do actually catch fire. And most of course were from before EVs began being transported. Now the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, reports that EVs are a potential fire hazard and the special measures need to be put in place before transporting them on row-row ships, roll-on, roll-off. 
but they also state they used ice car carriers, oil tankers, bulk gas carriers and ships carrying highly hazardous, hazardous and flammable cargoes should also have special measures in place. Duh, a bit obvious. EVs are just no different in this respect. Now in looking into this, many fires start in the engine rooms, have nothing whatsoever to do with the cargo. Some fires start in the accommodation, one recently caused by an iPhone catching fire in a cruise ship cabin. But EVs definitely do catch fire, there is proof of that. However, in the last full year, 2022, China exported over 3 million cars, many of those by ship, and a handful of fires actually occurred that could even conceivably have been caused by an EV. So what are the odds? Well here we get into fantasy land very quickly. Look at US data, we find that the NTSB, National Transportation Safety Board, does not actually hold any data on the number of fires. Any figure you read do not come from them. Well how about the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA? No, they only gather data from cars that have already crashed and then caught fire. Well, in fact, the figures people quote, you know, 20 times more likely, etc., they're entirely fictitious. Well, even in the UK, individual fire authorities report figures. But theirs include electric scooters, bikes, buses, lorries, not just EVs. I suspect there are no central, reliable, neutral sources collecting accurate data on the number of EVs that catch fire each year. What we can say is that more petrol and diesel cars catch fire, but of course there are far more of them to start with, and many of them are older, leaky, faulty, and prone to catch fire at the slightest provocation. From all I have read, we can conclude that EVs do catch fire, but in tiny numbers. Many of the historical EV fires, we all heard about the Chevy Bolt for example, they're greatly exaggerated. Well, not that I wouldn't exaggerate if I owned one, but out of a total of 141,000 bolts in use in and around the United States, 16 have been confirmed as catching fire. And by far the most battery fires recorded have all been manufactured by LG Energy, who have admitted liability and they've had to pay billions in compensation. Well, luckily, LG Energy have changed their battery chemistry and the latest batteries are far less likely to catch fire. Indeed, all batteries are now less likely to catch fire, with many manufacturers going over to LFP batteries, which are really difficult to catch fire. Well, EVs are going through a learning curve, rapid but a curve nonetheless. And many companies totally ignored the battery management system in the early days. Nissan is a classic example with the Nissan LEAF. There was almost no heating or cooling on early models. Tesla, on the other hand, took extreme measures from the very first car and installed heating and cooling that some manufacturers, even today, do not meet. So today, while there are plenty of Teslas driving around with quarter and a half million miles on the clock and very few catching fire, Nissan Leafs are queuing off for battery replacements. As of 2022, Less than a total of 600,000 Leafs have been sold. More than 3 million Teslas are still driving around. Because these Teslas have a much greater range and access to the supercharging network, these cars generally do far more miles than the Leaf. As is common in all spheres of life, you get what you pay for. So is there anything to worry about? Well, not really, just be aware that battery fires can happen, just as petrol fires can happen. Be alert, but there is no need to be scared. I suspect that as a percentage, there are more petrol fires than battery fires, but part of that would be down to the fact that there is nothing to service on an EV, and the batteries are sealed, insulated, and fully waterproofed, safely out of reach of their drivers. Petrol cars have owners who tinker, and when times are hard and money is tight, more people will cut corners and DIY their ice car servicing, leading to some quite horrendous stories. Also, splashing petrol through a nozzle into your petrol tank 
releasing huge quantities of highly flammable vapours is an instant danger signal for fires. Yet, I still see people smoking on petrol forecourts. Well, thanks for watching. EVs are probably less likely to catch fire than ICE cars, but neither are good news. Just try and avoid them. I'm Dave.